Mess with me again, see if you don't get a new balance. Ah, number three, super rusty. Y'all see that? Oh, watch out, Chris Kyle. What the hell? Problem. Anyone else want to complain about forced advertisement or are we done here? <laughs> Warning, we're just having fun. If you take stuff too serious, this channel may not be for you, buddy. Man, oh man, what a week it's been, guys. Uh, I'm gonna be pushing, and I mean pushing to get y'all video this week. Let's just say I've been busy. Mr. Puddentang, what are you busy on, you ask? Well, here, I'll show you. All right, y'all know I got the old merchandise building, okay? So she's powered up, we're up and running, y'all. Inside ain't finished quite yet, though. I've been sheet rocking. I've been ship lapping. I've been doing crown molding, baseboards, insulating, roof shingling, electrical wiring, air conditioning, humming when I'm plumbing. You name it, I've been doing it. All right, we didn't do all that in here, uh, but I did finish some wiring up, got some sheetrock up. I textured a back wall. I had a gentleman come finish these other walls for me today. Trimmed out with this window. That way I could get the window unit in there. Now there's my spectacles. That's why I can't see deadly right now. There you are. Now we still got some flooring to put down and we got some trimming to do and some, yeah, we ain't quite there yet. But this ain't my kind of work, guys, so I'm proud of how this stuff turned out. She's turning out pretty good, but that don't do us any good for out there in the shop now, does it? This crap's work. That's what it is. Old shop truck just been hauling damn everything. You name it, she'll haul it. So when you got two days to do a video and get something edited and uploaded, you should definitely do a will it run. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. We're going to do a will it run on this B2000, okay? Now, it was a while ago. I've had her a couple weeks here. I went and picked her up. Guys, we have successfully made it out to the middle of nowhere. Look, I thought I was from the sticks, and then I drove here, y'all. <laughs> Look what we found, B2000. Don't know much about it, y'all. Seen it on Facebook Marketplace. Price more than fair, okay? I said, does it have an engine in it? She said, I think so, but we can't. I didn't get the hood open, so... You know what? Look at this thing. I was happy with the price as is, so we just come out. First time really getting to see it. She did, uh, she she scooped all the trash out of the back so we didn't have to haul that home, which was nice. Ooh. Handle's a little floppy. That'll be all right. Those could use a little oil. Ooh. That ain't pulled, been pulled in a good minute. When you buy something without knowing the condition of the engine, you don't know if it's going to be a rat's nest, you don't know if a head's going to be pulled, you don't know what you're going to get. Oh, God. Going to get a get a workout curl in this hood is what we're going to get. Oh, boom. You roll, the, you roll the dice and sometimes, guys, you win. Honestly, that right there is exactly what we want to see. Untouched, just look like she's been sitting for a good while. Have us a little nest up in there, little acorns, all right? They get hungry, too. So I believe this will be the 2.0. I don't know a lot about these trucks, guys. Thought it may say right there, but I don't see it. So it should be a 2.0. Oh, yeah, that's probably why it's a 2000, all right? <laughs> the lady said this was her father's truck, been sitting about 20 years. Uh, he used to take it to run in and out of town, her and her brothers. would uh, They'd go to church in it, okay? She'd have to ride on her brother's lap. So she said one time they were going like, gonna go on this trip. She was tired of having to ride on her brother's lap. She's gonna ride in the back of the truck, show them who's boss, right? <laughs> well, lo and behold, this trip they went on was like a two hour trip. So she was just laying in the bed. Said when Sam eyes were passing, they had to look at her and she was all crouched down hiding. Probably looked like she was kidnapped. <laughs> She's a sundowner, whatever that means. Can't make out the sticker on this one. Got both caps on this side, one cap on this side. We're missing one cap and that's it. Unless we get lucky and that cap's behind the seat. Survey says, negative. 
Got more rat's nest. No cap. Cap or no cap, I think we found us a good little truck. Let's get her loaded. This is the first one maybe ever that all the dang wheels and tires are rolling on it. Nothing's locked up. Everyone wants to know where I find these blankets at. Guys, you gotta find a gas station that looks like this in your set. Then you find a ice matcha latte oat milk in there for your wife and you take it to her and you surprise her and that's how you suck up. Y'all can take all kinds of notes right here. Unless your wife likes her coffee black. You know, she drinks it like a man. Take her black coffee, it's fine. Now she may look a little overloaded, but the air's just a little low in the helper bags. But this damn thing still rode like a cloud, so don't let her fool you. Guys, is this a long bed? If it is, it's a very proportionate long bed. It looks good. Almost looks too long to just be a short bed, but it don't look like... It's not ridiculous long. I thought it was a short bed, but now it's got me kind of double taken. We're going to have to do some research. If it's a long bed, I like it. Everybody knows the best push-pull vehicle in the game is the tow roller. <laughs> Quick attack. y'all say we see if the old engine's free on there or not lock it unlock it reach down there we go it's gonna be a minute before i get to mess with this one so i've got now where i kind of like to see if the engines are locked up or not because if they are well we got plenty of time for them to do some soaking she's all here and she looks good but that don't mean nothing yeah. Get a ratchet. My little sissy hands may not get it done. Oh, dang it. <laughs> not what I expected out of this one. I set the standard high for you, baby, and you're going to do me like this. There's an oil on one of these. Aha, uh -huh, right there looking like a half a set of Harry Potter glasses. She's as dark as can be, but she don't look bad. It ain't all full of water or nothing. A little, a little bit bigger. Oh yeah, guys, she is stuck. Oh, oh. Ah, I was hoping she was gonna be a free engine, and she's not. We'll pull her plug wires here. Oh, 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 oh man, see what we got going on here. Well, that's good. I was afraid that whole thing was about to be packed or something. Spark plug looks good. Get our dirt daubers out of here. They were building one hell of a mud hut in right there. The palm strike for number three. Let them know I ain't messing around. Last but not least, we got lucky number four. A little corrosion on the end of it, but not much. Kind of like a colonoscopy or whatever they call that thing, because the day just went to shit. <laughs> got the borescope up and running. You can see old handsome on the screen. Don't you worry about that. Uh, sure. Oh, look at them nice and rusty cylinder walls. Uh, top of the piston don't look bad. It's, she's a little dirty, but that thing is rusty. Number three, super rusty. Y'all see that? That don't look good one bit. Number two's got a little rust in her. Oh, man. 
Don't worry about number one. You can still see cross hatching on her. She's nice and pretty. <laughs> so number one's beautiful. Two, three, and four are crunchy and rusty. And well, y'all know what my go-to is here, especially since we got time to let her soak. You want to be a rusty pain in the butt? I'll treat you like a rusty pain in the butt. We're going to wash her out with some vinegars. Plank number two is thirsty also. All right. We're going to store our funnel. <laughs> We're going to store our vinegar. Uh, guys, not what I was hoping to see, you know, but uh, hopefully that vinegar will do her job and break down that rust. And give her one last hoorah. Oh, baby! <laughs> told y'all that vinegar's good. Did you see how fast it worked? How long that soak? Three minutes? Boom. Engine's free. <laughs> Man, that's some good stuff. <laughs> I'm going to top off each cylinder and we're still going to let her soak for a couple days. This hood ain't supposed to hold itself, by the way. <laughs> that does not have built-in springs. So she freed up that day after putting just a little bit of vinegar in her. Now I came out here a few days after that and I shot some 50-50 uh, mix down in her. 50% kerosene, 50% trans fluid, 100% does the job. That's a good lubricant, good old school one. I ain't used her in a while. Uh, so I thought we'd send some of that down in her. Uh, now I think a lot of this is probably going right past them stuck rings and going right down into our crankcase, which is always good. Well, the sun's going down on this old sundowner, so I'd be happy if I could just get her in the shop this evening. So why don't we see if we can get her pushed around there. I already got the old mobile compressor unit out, so we can take her. Come on, baby. Take some air. Oh, yeah. Pop on out of there. Don't worry about that air leak. This wheel is dirt infused for custom flavor. Look, there's, there she is. I knew there's a valve stem in there somewhere. <laughs> Tires off the bead on the inside, so that one's a no-go. Huh, what the hell? Anal added fuel anal. Anal, anal added fuel anal. I don't know what the hell they're trying to say, but... They didn't want no one getting in there. They slapped a lock on her. Front one will take. She wasn't even all the way flat. Just damn near. Oh, fancy cap is knocked into plum hell. Deep dish pizza. That's a deep dish damn dinger on the center cap there. Jacked her up here and gave her a couple donkey kicks. Changed her mind a little bit. <laughs> gave her a couple kicks with the $7.99 prison shoes from the Walmart. A little prison shoe persuasion. This one went flat already. <laughs> How my whole damn week's been going. Gotta get a kid to help me push before we run out of air again. She's a speed racer. Coming in hot. Come on, Hank. My oldest daughter's supposed to be coming to push, man. Here we sit as our tire goes flat. That flat may help us anyhow. <laughs> Keep turning. Nope. What do we got there? Well, that's what I thought it was. Looked like a damn steering wheel tie to me. We basically turned that Mazda into a zero turn. <laughs> Fence back there. Don't worry about it. It's fine. We're going to give her a little love bump. You mess with the wrong ones because I call them don't and play. On the bright side, at least the brakes ain't dragging. Life could be worse. Let's go for a push. 
Finally got us a trained professional 17 year old driver shoving us around. Bring the power, Hank. Give her some gas. We got a flat, she ain't gonna roll away. Man, that's a good looking rig. We're gonna tow hook her now. some work. Make me miss sheet 115% that was a lie. I will never in the life of me miss sheet rocking. I prepared you guys a short list of things I would rather do than sheet rock. Boy, I'd rather use a porcupine than toilet paper to wipe with. I'd rather take a spinning back heel kick from Chuck Norris to my nads. I would rather purposely be disrespectful to somebody in front of my grandmother. That one's gonna hurt, cause she she whoop anybody's ass, okay? I ain't sheetrocking again. I don't even know how we got on the tangent about sheetrocking again. Uh, what are we gonna do? Let's pop the hood on her. We're gonna start spraying hinges according to that door. Usually not a fan of the WD-40, but she did pretty good for our old chieftain in the last video, so we're gonna give her another shot here. Boy, I can't imagine why I'm not a fan of it. Y'all see that? Looks like me trying to get going at 3 in the morning when I got to urinate. Little dribble here or there. <laughs> we'll try a little PB Blaster because she breaks loose faster. I believe I ran this one over by the looks of her. Rust Belt Warriors. <laughs> Rust Belt Warriors. Is that a thing? I don't feel like that's a thing. Well, how about this no latch and latch here? Yeah, she's a little better. She ain't no 1958 Pontiac, I guarantee you that. Man! You're ugly. Going live with the jump pack, got us grounded there. If you ain't got power, all you gotta do is plug it in right there. We got headlights at least. Which is good, cause we ain't got diddly out of the ignition. We ain't got a horn or nothing, she's worthless. Looks like the bottom of our starter's hiding out right there. That's the wire that goes to our solenoid, I could fill up there. Got that in clipped on the starter solenoid. I don't know why I'm making it look like this thing's talking. This end clips on here. With any luck, when we squeeze that trigger, she spins. She thought about it. She's trying. Oh, there she went. <laughs> she may have sprayed a little on out. You did not want to be standing in that doorway, I guarantee it. Be a great time to tell y'all about the Get Gone Degreaser from the Sweet Patina. It's available on his website, along with all of his other cleaning products that, well, one may say they whip ass. And if you so choose to go purchase you some, just be sure you use that promo code on the old television screen. Damn! Boy, if you run, I'm gonna buff that booty like you owe me money. Before we go in for this evening, we're gonna take our handy dandy flashlight and some PB and we're just gonna shoot some down the cylinders. It ain't gonna hurt nothing at night. Oh yeah. Got her lubed up. Another thing we can do, we can pull this breather real quick. Boy, look at the dirt daubers on her. I was wanting to get in here and spray down this carburetor because of crap like this. Might be a damn copperhead in here still. There's some kind of snake in here at some point anyhow. What in the turbo carburetor we got on this thing? 
The bastards are everywhere. Boy, that's the wildest turbo looking choke set up on a carburetor I ever have seen. No, oh, got the mess pattern. That locks it. What, what happens if we put her in sharpshooter? Oh, watch out, Chris Kyle. Boy, this thing inspired me to hit the cylinders again. I think I knocked the rust clean off of everything with that. What do you guys think? Is this baby going to go from being stuck to being a runner? Find out tomorrow when you come back. Tune in on the old Putnam's Fab Shop television set. Best thing since sliced bread, if I do say so myself. Back on her in the morning. It is cold this morning, so we're going to start by getting some warm blood flowing. And it keeps me young and nimble. I'm like a gazelle on the safari. Get warmed up a little bit. Oh, hurt my wrist a little bit. I'll trace around these bolts and pull this hood. That way y'all can see what's going on here. Come daddy. Nope. Oh, dropped her in the mouse poop. All right, all right, there. All right, perfect. It's exactly what I was trying to do. Yes, sassy it would be this morning. Ah! There we go. Now you guys can see. Let's clean some of this crap up first thing. Now I'll tell you what, if there's still a snake in here somewhere, they don't want to mess with me. You ever seen snakes getting new balances? I'll turn them into a pair. Pick up all the big stuff. Let's give her a sec job. Uh-oh. A rat's nest made down a thin. Woo! Maybe our fifth time using it? That is not what you want to see coming from your six and a half horse old craftsman there. Things worthless as tits on a chicken. <laughs> I got an email from a gentleman and they told me I need to go to the local hardware store. I had something to pick up. Damn, that thing's heavy. What y'all want me to suck up? You name it, she sucks it. Let's just say she's got some vacuum in power. I done learned, can't say she's got some suck power. She's got some vacuum in power, okay? You name it, she sucks it. You name it, she sucks it. Well, she was good while she lasted. <laughs> I guess we're done cleaning until we get another shot back. old battery out of here. She's purdy. Here we're a little pop trick. There we go. Let's 
see what we got here. Global power. This thing looks like it belongs in a cheesy 80s movie. Her jump pack on. Make sure she's gonna crank again. Crank it pretty good. Next, we're gonna hit her with a compression test just to see what we're working with. Does not smell good between the vinegar, trans fluid, PB blast, just a little bit of everything. Kind of wedge that throttle open, making it choke itself. We'll wedge that choke open. Let's see what number four's got. She got all the damn compression. She got a buck 60. I like to keep a nice ledger of this. Buck 60. That one was pretty rusted, wasn't it? Yeah, that Mortsky says stuck engines never run, but I just, I don't think he's nice to him, you know? He's all mean and angry and stuff. Need to be a little more joyful. Maybe them engines will cooperate with them. <laughs> I know number three was one of the real rusted ones, and she's at a buck eighty. Knew we we're gonna have one weak one, and there she is. She'll free up though, don't y'all worry about that. She came in at a strong 70-ish. Get her wrote down, 70-ish. If I recall correctly, number one was the one where I could still see damn honing marks and stuff on the cylinders. It, it wasn't rusty or nothing. So this one should be our top contender, you would think. Or she may only have 65. <laughs> Never judge a book by its cover. I just cranked and cranked and cranked and it did end up shooting up to above 120. If we get number three and four fire and she'll run like a Harley Davidson anyhow. Pretty impressed with the compression numbers, especially on three and four. I was not expecting that high numbers on them. Uh, number two, a little stuck, no problem. I think number one will free up, no problem. Next, let's look at getting some uh, spark out of this old girl. This plug wire obviously went down to number one, so we're gonna mark it where we know which one number one is. I don't know if we're gonna have electronic ignition on this one or not. Get our plug wires pulled off. Gonna pull the screws on this baby. We're gonna open her up and take a gander on the inside. Look what we're working with here. Come on, there we go. Oh yeah, we got the fancy electronic ignition. Well that cap, or rotor I mean, she looks pretty nice, don't she? Cap's got a little corrosion on her down in there. Pull the rotor real quick, just where we can take a closer look. This is the first distributor I've ever messed with that sticks out sideways out of an engine. That's a fact. We can clean her for a little corrosion anyhow. Give her a little love with a little scotch bright there. That shined up like a set of Dayton's. A little spit shine on the center of this thing too. Oh, she'll send a spark. I enjoy messing with points, so I was hoping there'd be some in here, but I didn't figure there would be. That's easy enough. With that shininess for you, there's corrosion down on those. Maybe you can see. We're using a super fancy scraper here, aka a flathead. We're just gonna knock corrosion off of them. That layer off there. Pretty mean layer. Look at that. Got that one to come off as a whole. Boom. There's another one. Take our Scotch Brite and give them a polished job now. 
where our plug wires go and coil wire, that's all super clean, so we ain't gotta worry about that. Boy, I don't remember who sent out this memory foam dream for my butt talks, but I appreciate it. Y'all know we can uh, put that on there looking dirty. I've proven time and time again, you can literally polish a turd, guys. In fact, you can polish a turd until you have a successful YouTube channel. That's what I did. <laughs> Started off with a turd of a channel and I polished her out and here we are. And I appreciate the support from you guys. Let's slap this baby back on. Her cap back on. See if we can get some spark out of the old coil. Cap looks clean anyhow. Uh, move our ground here. Now let's see. Looks like that wire is chewed right there. So we're going to have to do some reconnecting. And we got the Bluetooth coil wire here. Okay. Stubby edition. This truck being pretty original is what makes her worth probably, you know, 20 grand. So we want to keep as much original stuff as possible. So we don't want to lose this wire connector here, okay? Get on, get on in there, come on. There you go. Give her a squeeze. Basically how she came from the factory. Like nothing ever even happened. What in the damn double lot 12 volt feed we got going on there? Look at that big hefty girl. We're gonna take the good half of our coil wire anyhow. I'm gonna slap her on our coil. We're gonna trim this end. We're gonna see if we can get her to spark. Jumper wire there. A jumper on our hot. Get our cheater switch hooked back up. Find a good place to take this towards the ground. So if we crank this and everything's working, we should get some spark. Come on, baby. Oh yeah, about the strangest damn spark I ever have seen. Ain't got nothing to do with that custom wire. Now we gotta find a coil wire. I don't know that I got one. Anything's a coil wire when you're desperate enough, so don't mess with me. Reckon we can steal one from the Yeehaw. She's just a parts rig now anyhow. Three weeks later, he still ain't got me my damn drive shaft. We're gonna talk more about that when we get back on this thing I'm, it's supposed to be done allegedly everyone thinks these trucks are the same do you see where this distributor is do you see where that one is they're not the same this engine's ford that one is not guys just because the body styles are the same don't mean the trucks are the same about 12 people said well if that one's got a five speed why don't you take the drive shaft from it put it in the yeehaw two reasons one then this one would need a drive shaft which don't do me any good and then two I don't know that all the crafts are the same because they're different drive trains. Now it may work, but that still ain't gonna fix problem number one now, is it? This may not even reach over there. Well, the coil wire will work, so clearly the drive shafts would have worked, so I apologize. Spark plugs, pretty dang clean, actually. A little brake clean rebuild on them do just dandy. Pop her on there. Ground that to our valve cover there, hopefully. Coil still hot. We're going live. Oh yeah, caught that brake clean on fire. Told y'all she had good hot spark. <laughs> and that's why I use the brake clean rebuild. It's gonna blast off some of the stuff. When it don't blast off, it'll burn off. You basically end up with a rebuilt spark plug. It was still dirty in there too, by the way. So that's the test from now on. If it's got good enough spark to set itself on fire. Oh yeah, we got a good spark plug. Now all jokes aside, that actually is really hot looking good spark. It's what you want to see. Boy, I ain't had luck out of one of these little carburetors yet. Y'all think we're gonna have luck with this one? The old Dirt Dauber Special. That's good. Let me get the old lazy ass on her. Oh, being a lazy ass is nice sometimes. Lazy ass is out of juice, damn near. Spark plugs are tight. Take a gander at the 
plug wires. Yeah, they look all right. I don't think they need a restore. Uh, I did not pay attention to see which way the distributor rotated. That's why we got the Google search. Search whatever you want. Uh, Mazda 2.0 firing order. Google's not very helpful, so we pretty well know it's going to be 1342 on our firing order, right? Maybe? Y'all think an owner's manual would say? Still got this in the front seat of the old travel wall. Oh, look at them sweet stripes. Welcome to the 80s. Well, this is about the coolest little book I ever have seen. Check that tension and damages on your V-belt. Clean that air filter out frequently and do not remove the thermostat, dummy. Damn, this B2000 could go 7,500 miles without an oil change. One, three, four, two. I was hoping it was gonna tell us which way it rotated. Gives a damn how it rotates. Why don't you look at that damn camper on the back of that thing? Anyone got a camper for one of these? I think she's gonna go clockwise, but we can tell real easy, guys. Pull that cap off, and we'll let that baby spin. <laughs> oh yeah. Clockwise, towards the front. You can tell the plugs are in. She is having a little harder time cranking over now because she's got all that compression inside. She's just ready to roar to life. Number one. So this should be three. Four. Now that's a coil wire. Four. And two. We're good. Slap our coil wire back on. We should have spark. I'm breathing air, so we got air. Uh, compression is somewhat there. She's missing one thing, guys. That's this. A finely beautiful aged bottle of Get Her Done 91. This particular bottle has been uh, aging for 20 years. All right. Got the shop doors open. Coil's hot. Get her Get Her Done 91. Let's see if this baby wants to sing the good old song. She ain't gonna do deadly if we don't hook up the old switch. Now let's see if she wants to, oh, come on. Here we go, baby. Come on. She, she's gonna sing. quiet that thing really is like 
like a little sewing machine, baby. A little sewing machine who just smokes a little bit. Hot damn, I'll take it. Let's top her off with a little water before we let her run too much more. Didn't take too much to top her off. I'd say, no, about a third of a gallon. Next, we're gonna take our mask and tape. It's what every car builder needs to keep, okay? We're gonna tape off this god awful sounding smog pump situation. We got a smog pump? What is that? We ain't even got a smog pump. What's that pull from then? The damn exhaust? Sure enough. Oh, you know what we didn't do? We may want to disconnect our fuel pickup there. We're going to disconnect our fuel pickup here. We should have done that beforehand. Some water in her. The suck gobbler taped off. Let's see how quiet she is now. Till she runs out of fuel. Guys, that engine sounds super smooth. We'll take it. There's only one way I know to celebrate a victory like that. I'm gonna celebrate with a burrito from the old Taco Boy because one, they're delicious. Two, I ironed it, damn it. <laughs> Three, it's really warm on my hands and I ain't mad at it. Folks wanna know why I'm always drinking this. It's like Pedialyte, guys. Drink you some of it, see if you don't feel better afterwards. Helps with hangovers too, but I don't drink anymore, so I ain't got that problem no more. Basically, it makes you feel like a superhero, so just try it. Got some top shelf vinegar here, an electric fuel pump. What's the chances she'll hold an idle with some fuel pressure? Before we hook this up, guys, I wanna tell y'all about some merchandise type stuff real quick. Stickers are selling like crazy. I appreciate it, you guys. I got more of them in the works. Woo, it's warm in here, baby. I like it. Guys, I'm not adding t-shirts to the website till this thing's operational, so I'm trying to get her done in the next two days, today and tomorrow, or tomorrow and the next day, I mean, basically. Uh, we got all kinds of t-shirts coming in, ready for pickup this week. So, this week, today when this video posts, I probably went and picked up t-shirts. Now I think about that, we ain't gonna post them till the following Monday. So Monday after this, I hope you're ready for some t-shirts, y'all. Truck t-shirts, travel all t-shirts, sitting on your ass t-shirts, logo t-shirts, yeehaw t-shirts, 100K t-shirts, you name it. We're gonna have it right here in stock. Lastly, but not leastly, we got our 100K Tumblr Cup giveaway going on. So on last week's video, old Pontiac video. I'm replying to 10 people. You won in that old hot damn contest. Boy, y'all commented hot damn all over the place. <laughs> so be looking for those to see if you're one of the lucky winners. Uh, and then people were like, hey, won't you just sell those? Here's the deal, guys. I got to buy these for $30 a piece, which means there ain't much left to sell them to you guys. I don't feel right selling cups for 50 bucks a piece. Uh, you know, I it, it'd be a lot of hassle for little to no profit, and I am trying to make money here, so I know. Y'all let me know what you think about that. I'm telling you right now, I can't just bulk order these things, though. Everyone wants a cup. Ain't that easy. So I hope y'all are ready for some merchandise, because I believe my drive shaft is going to be done. We're going to slap a drive shaft in that e-haul. We're going to haul butt up to Stillwater, Oklahoma, about an hour and a half away. And I'm going to load that back down with t-shirts. So the merchandise you buy is going to take a, a hop and a skip in the back of the old yeehaw. Makes it all authentic as shit. Let's see if we can't get this fuel pump hooked up now. Uh, now, I do appreciate y'all's guys' support on the merchandise. 
several of y'all know that's a large way that I'm able to do this and uh, support my family and whatnot. I had someone who's ballsy enough to call me and say, I hate forced advertisement. So you know what? I hate whatever you do to support your family as you watch my hour-long video for free that cost you nothing, okay? Heaven forbid, right? No, I hope you do support your family. I would've never say nothing bad about you supporting your family to you. Mess with me again, see if you don't get a new balance. Lucky I didn't screenshot you. My whole angry mob be headed to your house right now. I hate forced advertisements. <laughs> Heaven forbid somebody make a damn dollar around here. I'll encourage you to go make money, though. If you got a way to hustle and make money, make your damn money. Don't be worried about how I make mine. You're lucky I don't make mine whipping ass. I'd be headed to your house. Anyone else want to complain about forced advertisement, or are we done here? <laughs> Just playing. Love all you guys. Are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? You know them zip ties don't lie. Y'all see this? It's what regulates uh, the fuel return, so maybe we should add it in. Let's test her out. Oh yeah, she restricts. Just because I have this tool out and it's convenient, that's where we're gonna ground our fuel pump at. Out of grounder. Gonna rob our jumper wire here for our fuel pump. Uh, I turned the key on inside the truck. So let's test our coil and see if we have 12 volts going there or not. If not, we need another jumper wire, obviously. My grandma who wired airplanes gave me this meter damn 20 years ago. Oh baby, coil's hot, so we're good. That's what you want is a lot of sparks right here around gas. You can see we're returning there. But that ain't really doing much considering we're uh, flooding there. Like that carburetor needs some body work. Let's pull this and see what we got going on here maybe. Can't do deadly without getting on the inside of her. I didn't reckon so. This is guaranteed to leak after I pull it apart so we better pull the three screws off the front of the bowl here. Just having a functional fuel system would have been too easy, wouldn't it? A little trim ring. There we go. So there's a piece of glass out of her. That's the level. Nicky. Next, we need a long, skinny, fine tip, flat head float tuning machine. That's her right there. I see a little tab in there that I think if I bend up, it should help our uh, needle just a hair. Now I know what it feels like to be a surgeon. Except I didn't have to go to school. So I don't have all that debt. And, oh yeah, someone may not die. That may help a little bit. See how we're not stopping it from coming in there with a the float up? That's the problem. We should be. Here's what that baby looks like up close. See how when you pick up on that float, she ain't cutting off? Problem. Don't worry about that little mess. It'll be all right. I'll tweak on her just a hair more. Yeah, we'll take that. There she comes. Boy, we ain't got no luck with carburetors, do we? She's trying, guys, but the carburetor just ain't right. What we got here? Finally whoop on it enough? No, don't do that, whatever I just did. Carburetor is not right. She is not happy. Can't be any of this 
damn vacuum leaks, can it? I really want this thing to warm up. She's gonna smoke out all the stuff we poured in. We're gonna send some trans fluid down in her. ATF may help with her ticking. She's a little smoky in here, don't worry about that. Look at this, stuck this garage up. Bucket of boats. Yeah. That's what it is. Look at it. What do you think about that, Danny? She's running. Yeah, she's running on, well, I don't know about that. That looks like she's a bucket, bucket of boats around here. I look like I'm gonna check around here and see the boats are at. <laughs> I can't throw them old boats myself, you know what I mean? <laughs> what are them boats out? I just threw them out the door, they won't hurt it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, they hurt it. I know exactly what you're saying. Come over here and see if you want me to get this thing primed anyway. Yeah, let's prime her. All right, we got this. It was a good car, too. What was it? It was a Ford uh, Carrier. Carrier? Like yeah. my, that's my Yeehaw. That's yeah. a Carrier. Is that a little Ford Carrier? That sure was a good truck. Because my woman run out of antifreeze and she done it in. Uh-oh. We buried you. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened. Well, that's what happened. Well, that's what happened. Well, that's what happened. Well, that's what happened. That's Danny Cheatwood, by the way, and if you don't understand them, well, something's wrong with how you talk, because I know everything he says. Uh, this thing, she had one decent heat cycle here. Carburetor obviously needs some attention. We're having fuel problems with her. Uh, let's let her cool off a little bit. I'd be curious to see if we got compression back in number one and two. How about y'all? Let's take her to old compression town now and see what she says. Number four is reading a buck 45, which is 15 less than before. There we go. Bet you that's what the problem was on number four. We're up at a buck 75 on number three. Boy, I need a damn compression tester that ain't a piece of crap. I can hear it blowing by there and it's still up at 150. She's over a buck fifty also. So number one jumped up, number two jumped up, three and four pretty well stayed the same. Let's light this baby up good. It's hotter than a two peckered tomcat in here. I bet you were right. Feels like one of them old tomcats all in here. Well, you can't see my tape joints, can you? Nope, you buzzed it in good. All right, that's what I like to hear. That's what, Mr. Chief. What I Mr. Chief Wood approves. Yeah, that's a brave dog. All right, I'll take it. It looks good to me. Damn right, Danny. I'll tell you what, you stopped on it good, buddy. All right. Good job. I'll give you credit. Could have done no better myself. Bet I'm gonna help you. There you go. Put my pants on her now, ain't she? Yeah, you see that roll in your hand, and I thought you was gonna help me, and I thought, damn, let's get this done. Here. No, man. All right, we got this. Huh? I think we need to crush it. Crush what? These nice cars. Crush these cars? Yeah. How about I crush my foot up your rear? Hey, look out here, brother. Look <laughs> hey, do you have to put a fuel filter on your truck? Yeah, I got in there and I went in there and started that dude up, looked underneath there, and that damn thing was dropping leak gas out of there, so I ran and grabbed me a cork, looked like a monkey putting a cork up a, a pig's ass. <laughs> Monkey putting a cork up a pig's ass, I like it. <laughs> 
Danny's a good dude. I had him uh, paint the spray foam, and he showed up out of the blue just now and said he knew I was going to be painting the wall, so he just wanted to show up to help. That was mighty nice of him. Well, I ended up helping Danny last night out there in the shed, and that comes with some good news and some bad news. We got her all primed, and then about 10.30 at night, or 10 at night, me and my oldest daughter went back out in the shed. We got her painted. That's where the bad news comes in. Bad news is this crap looks terrible. Well, that's supposed to be gray. Why the hell does it look so purple? I don't know the camera's gonna pick it up, but this crap looks like light purple and I ain't happy with it, which means I get to paint again. We'll get her dead though, I ain't scared. Now as far as this old moldy peach goes, uh, guys, I think with their carb rebuild, a little tune up, a little emissions delete, uh, I think we, I think she has some potential, okay? Now we know from this fender she's got some cleanup potential. We didn't get a whole lot done in this video, but I honestly didn't even have time to make this video. I squeezed her out anyhow. But this sets us up for a good number two with this truck. We might get her running. We may get her driving. She may get a little makeover, okay? She could get a little lowering job. I may have a nice set of wheels that could go on it, you know? Possibilities are endless. Did I mention I bought this thing for 250 buckaroos? Is that a good deal or is it a bad deal? I don't know. I thought it was fair enough. Uh, we could end up in a cool little truck for cheap, y'all. She just needs a little elbow grease. She'll clean up. Well, I don't know what was coming out of that exhaust, but it done turned into some chips or something. So will she make a good runner? Maybe. Will she make a good driver? Possibly. Is she gonna get shiny like a honey? The future will tell y'all, so be sure to come back. My priority all week has been that shed. I've got today to get it finished up. I appreciate the support of you guys making all this possible for me. Uh, thank you guys, and I will see you guys in the next one. Now, we got the Instagram going. I set up a Facebook page. I don't ever get on it. I set up a TikTok. I don't ever get on it. Uh, yeah, sorry. Just active on here for the most part. On Instagram at the Puddin's Fab Shop, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Now, don't forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. And I just told y'all my project. Get paint, paint, flooring, trimming. Got to trim out them windows, everything else, guys. I'm running out of time. Here's my back hustle. Here's my back hustle.